Hello, Anyong. Welcome back to our channel. Today I will be reacting to the documentary. It's the Misa edition. Okay, then I'm excited. And uh, thank you once again for Orange San. I will link the original video and the channel down below. So please check them out. So without further ado, I'm gonna sit in the corner. Let's enjoy the video. I'm excited. ミサちゃんは1回目で言ってびっくりされるのはステージドリンクがウイスキーストレート。本当にあの人酔っ払うんです。ね、もう本当に2時間とかはま長いとやったりすると結構後半はもうあのフラフラというかベロベロというか。
was that her mother listened to music all the time. This is how Misa got to hear bands like the Red Hot Chili Peppers and The Who when she was still only in kindergarten. To be honest, the only reason I know about The Who is because my friend was the biggest fan. In school, she would just never shut up about them. <laughs> so yeah, I just had to throw that out there. Also, I want to know what's the difference between like playing a normal guitar and being a bassist. Is there like a really big difference? Is she like the, I don't know, the main act? I. Uh, just, Her mother was also if you know, please very call them that supportive way. and helped Misa choose the right school when she hesitated between university and professional college. Oh, her hair is Misa really pretty. Misa started a course on sound engineering in a professional college before changing to a bass course as she didn't want to work behind a stage but on stage as a professional bassist. Has goal. Before talking about bandmate, let's take a look at Misa's past experience in the music industry. Except for small bands during her school years, Misa had been a member of a band named Prototype for five and a half years, Ooh. between 2008 and 2013. Prototype was a small band composed of four members, and the band made at least two mini albums and performed several live concerts. We don't have that much information, but it seems that they sold their CDs directly and not via music stores. They used to perform in and around Shimo Kitazawa, which is where Misa lived, and Shibuya. So out of all of them, Misa is the only one who had like a professional career before they joined. Everyone else, they either did it like as a bit of a hobby, they were just interested in music, stuff like that. But I think she's the one who did it the longest, I would say, because obviously Kanami was doing well as well. But wow, that's a really good. Of one of their live performances, which states, that they sound like the Smashing Pumpkins and are appealing to everyone who loves Western music. The person who wrote this review also said that they couldn't stop smiling. It sounds like this band must have played some great music. Hmm. But that's not all. While she was playing for Prototype, Misa joined another band called Hurtist. This band was formed with six members who performed live several times before disbanding in October 2012. You can find three of their live videos oh, nice. on their YouTube channel. Misa and Akane also met in 2012 as they were going to the same school, the Tokyo Music School. They connected immediately as instrumentalists and worked together on several projects. The same year, they made an appearance as actors <laughs> oh in an God. MV of the singer-actress Becky with the song Yoruka Switch. In 2015, Misa, along with Konami and Akane, mm -hmm. were at the fifth anniversary party of the idol band Predia in That Zeppelin. is so cool! The three of them knew each other before like they joined like the same band. That is amazing! Like You can see how small the music industry really is. Like not a, I, would say, I wouldn't say music industry, like a... Well, yeah, I think that can count as a music industry. It's so small that everyone knows each other, and it is just amazing how it's all linking up Tokyo so far. Oh my back. god, it's like watching a movie. You remember the link between Predia and Bandmate, right? Yes. There was a band called Mochi to Cheese, made by yeah. Akane, Konami, and three members from Predia. All right, we are in May 2013. Prototype announced that they will disband in July. Oh and Bandmade posted an audition announcement on May 29th. Everything's the next just month, working out. On June 5th, Misa announced on her old account linked to Prototype that she's going to an audition. Hmm. Does this mean that Misa had the perfect timing to join Bandmade? Let's see this how she my was cat, sorry. <laughs> In another interview, Misa confirmed that Akane tried to recruit her into Bandmade right when Prototype announced their disbanding. But Akane didn't know about this information. Kane. So she was bold enough to invite Misa to join another band. And it paid off. <laughs> now Misa has said that she was in Izakaya when Akane called her, and she was pretty drunk, so she had to take at least the night to think about it. Oh. Misa listened to the demo and found that the songs were proper rock music <laughs> and cool. Proper she look. was actually afraid that this band would be an idol band. Oh. 
welcome. As she didn't want to stop It's a maid face, van, though. Lisa quickly accepted the invitation to join Van Maid the day after Akane talked to her. So in the end, Miku recruited Konami, who was found on Nico Nico. And then Konami recruited Akane just after the restaurant she was working at closed, and Akane recruited Misa just after her group disbanded. <laughs> wow. It's... If that is not fate. Exactly. I don't know what is. God damn it. Like, the link is just impressive. They, like, they already had, like, different careers doing different things. And then the time came, and then everything just stopped. And then this ad came up, and everyone just joined. It is it's wild. I can't. I just can't wrap my head. It is. Oh, my God. <laughs> my mind is getting blown away. Now Ew. that Misa had joined Bandmate, it's God. a new start for our favorite faces. A new start, yes, but with one problem. The maid outfit. <laughs> Misa was never into cosplay, so she wasn't used to wearing this kind of clothing. Fair. She felt really uncomfortable during the first live shows oh. and with the first version of her outfit. It was also around this time when Misa thought about quitting Bandmate. It was during the first or second one-man performance and Misa was already working a lot in addition to her work for Bandmate. So she was in really bad physical and mental mm. condition. She felt that the music she liked was too far from the music she played with the band and started to think about leaving and forming a band where she could play the kind of music she liked. She talked to the manager who proposed that she take a good look at the view from the stage at the Masters and Princesses and decide after that. Thankfully, the reactions and responses from the crowd that day moved Misa deeply enough so she chose to stay with Bandman. For some reason, I don't know why I'm getting anxious when I know what the end result is. It's like, oh, oh my god, what's gonna happen? I'm like, I already know what's gonna happen. God damn it. Why, why so anxious? <laughs> Oh. She was sure that this band had great potential and could become way bigger. Time yes. flies by and yes, we are so. at that moment where Konami is writing songs for the band. From world domination but more in Conqueror and Unseen World, Misa actively participated in songwriting on her bass lines oh. and has felt more freedom since then. Konami gives out notes from time to time depending on the song and what she has in mind. While writing music, Misa thinks more about what would serve the quality of the song rather than be sure that it's playable immediately. She had difficulties recording some songs of Unseen World because of that, but she managed to get them recorded in the end by spending more time on the hardest parts. And even if a song is really difficult for her, Misa will always practice enough so that she doesn't have to look at her hands while she's playing live. Mm. For example, the first part of No God was written by Konami, and she asked Misa to write the rest of the song. At this time, Misa was learning bass and drum programming, so she wrote those two parts, Damn. including her solo. Get down! a new experience for her. So the bass, it sounds, I want. I don't want to say damp, but it is a lot deeper, I would say, because obviously Konami's was very different, but wow. New mm. riffs to Konami's they have very different styles. For unseen so world. And although she obviously sent her demos to Konami, Misa used to send them to another member, Psyche. Ooh. Misa sent her work to Psyche to confirm that her bass line was easy to sing with and also because Psyche praises her a lot. <laughs> and what Lisa loves to be praised by Psyche when she's working on a new song. That's so cute. As she wrote in an interview, I just send them to her without saying anything in order to get praised by her. That's my source of energy. Oh my god, this, this is so amazing. This is so cute. Like, the way they encourage each other, uh, it's just supporting one another. It is, it's too wholesome. My god, this, this group is too wholesome. And I'm getting angry by how wholesome this is, goddamn. <laughs> that makes me enjoy drinking better. Oh. 
What a great group of friends they are. I know. It's making me jealous. I want to have this type of group of friends. My god. Oh, can I join them? Can I just join them? I'm just going to be like, I'm going to sit on the corner. I'll support you guys with whatever. I just want to be there with you guys. It's, oh, there literally, it's making me cry. <laughs> particularities regarding Misa when you see her perform on the stage. The first one is that she never wears shoes when she's playing. Ooh. With some exceptions on very hot days Wait, during I've never noticed that. As the stage can get really hot. This is something she has done since the beginning of Bandmade. You can see her wearing shoes in some MV, but most of the time, she likes to play barefoot. You know what? Hire me as the cleaner and I'll make sure those floors are squeaky clean so my queen doesn't hurt her feet. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm gonna apply for that. She answered a question mm -hmm. from a fan in 2014 on Twitter saying that heels hurt her feet and are really hard to walk in, so she chose not to wear anything at all. Don't have to. Lisa even ended up with the nickname, the Barefoot Assassin. <laughs> Why? I love it. Well, first of all, she plays barefoot. And during the Gold Rush interview, when the band was asked about the maid outfits and particularly Misa's, which didn't look like a maid outfit, Miku answered that it's an assassin maid outfit. I the love how, uh, like, all of the maid costumes, it's very personalized. So it has their character in it. While it is, once again, a maid outfit and a maid band well obviously a band made but it's very personalized so when you look at them i'm like oh that's gonna suit misa's vibe or oh, that's gonna you uh, suit uh, uh, psyche's vibe it is just amazing it's like it's wonderful my god and i love how they actually let them uh kind of show themselves with the the way that they dress because i feel like when you think of like a generic group like a theme it's just that uh, generic, but for this one, I've always wanted to ask, like, oh, it is a made uh, kind of group, like a band, but they're all very dressed differently, but at the end of the day, they all look like maids. But it's, once again, impressive, and I love how the company actually lets them explore other areas, and kind of, you know, makes them project themselves by their outfits, even though they're a bit restricted, because obviously they're wearing some a maid outfit, but still they can show their personality through their costumes. It is wonderful, I love it. What's about Misa is that she always has a bottle of whiskey on her amp while performing live. And she even drinks in the MV of Don't You Tell Me. If you look closely at every performance, you can spot the bottle that she drinks during MCs. <laughs> during the US tour in 2022, she even had her own opening ceremony where she opened a can of beer in front of her mic to make a loud sound and the audience <laughs> love. really loved that. Moment. Yes, let's go. I don't drink, but I love it for her. Or drink whiskey during MCs for a long time. And she even shared a bit of her whiskey with a fan in 2019 during a concert in the New York Mercury Lounge. <laughs> she is thought to be the one who drinks the most. But if you had a chance to listen to the Radio 41, you would learn that they all actually drink a lot. <laughs> Except for Kanami, oh. who falls asleep before she gets a chance. Oh, to drink. bless! Oh, that's so Despite dope. her love for alcohol, Lisa <laughs> tweeted in May 2022 that she came to realize that it was too much for her, and she decided to be more careful in the future. And it's now, always better to take care of your health. Please, if you love drinking, please make sure you're drinking in moderation. For the love of God, I've I've worked in a place that had a massive like bar in it and i see people smashed out drunk and it makes me actually worried seeing them like that i'm like my god please please take care of yourselves guys if you love alcohol if not then good for you we're the same <laughs> time to talk about misa's play style as usual mm. i'll let proper bassists the, present yay, their thoughts to the you pros what they think about misa. i love this segment gentlemen if you please what makes Misa a good bassist? First of all, she went to musical school, so she learned a lot about music theory. You can see that in her playing. She's constantly moving around the wood note, uh, adding or removing note at the end of her phrases, uh, changing the tone by going all over the neck and not just staying at the lower end. She masters all the, uh, the playing style, finger style, slap, pick, 
Uh, she knows when to use them and always use the, the right one at the right moment. The thing that I want to emphasize is, it is one thing to actually study music, like get a degree in it, but it is a completely different thing when you're applying the theories and everything that you have learned. If you're like amazing at studying it and you're, no offense, really bad at applying it, I feel like that would that's a kind of a waste of time. But the fact that she studied it really well and she's actually able to apply it really well in her performance is amazing. Hats off to her. Uh, switch from one to another in the blink of an eye, like when she does her pig flip to, to switch from pig to slap. Um, her right hand work is is so smooth and precise. It's it's mesmerizing. Uh, when it comes to to her role in the band, she's a lead bassist. She she can flawlessly jump from from just playing the root note to taking the lead and, and or providing a, a, an harmony to to the vocals uh, and all of this in the same bar. There is no boundaries in her playing. That's what makes her so interesting and very inspiring to me. She's my, my favorite bassist and I hope to hear her and bandmate for a lot more years. When I think back about all of the bands that I've loved for many, 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 many years, you know, so many great bass players, but when I think of the bassists who, who really excited me or, or more importantly the ones whose parts I wanted to learn how to play, um, I think they all have kind of one thing in common. And that's the use of the bass, not just as a, as a tonal and rhythmic foundation for a song or that kind of glue that, that holds a, a band together, but they use the instrument as another source of, of melody and melodicism and musicality. And I think there are far fewer of those kinds of bassists out there. So imagine my delight as a bassist discovering Bandmate, where you have Misa, who's just constantly up and down the neck playing what's what aren't super complicated parts but making these really really musical choices about you know a note here versus a note here she's in many ways a counterpart to konami in that they're always expanding on a riff or adding new textures or new little motifs you know they may play something fairly straight the first time but after that forget it and it's not again like the parts are super complicated or technically difficult they're just really really smart or or for me the big thing is that they're really musical how would i describe misa's playing style that's a tall order <laughs> what makes her special to me is her writing and her flawless ability to judge what to play and when to play it without shying away from taking up space she doesn't just serve the song filling up the lower frequencies locking up with the drums She's actively creating a large portion. I just, I'm sorry, I just noticed Misa plays the bass, so she's covering the bass. Oh my god, my brain just exploded. I can't believe I asked the dumb question. Oh, what does a bassist do? Oh. <laughs> my, my brain just clicked in like a couple of seconds ago. God damn it, I'm dumb. Oh, I should really stop screaming. But my god, I am dumb. I'm sorry. Mr. Teacher son. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, she plays the bass because it's the bass of the song. Oh, for, for God's sake, Sophia, what the hell is wrong? Of what makes the songs what they are. The groove, drive, momentum, anticipation, tension. It's like all her parts serve a purpose larger than just playing notes that work in the right tempo. She really adds another thick layer to the onion that is bandmade. <laughs> One of my favorite habits of hers is when she's having a bit of a bass solo during the guitar solo, as can be heard in uh, Manners and Reincarnation, for example. It's so backwards to the old tropes about backing down during a solo, but it's always so tastefully made and never distracting, rather the opposite. She also has this ability to tap into what the other instruments are doing and create her own parts from that, seamlessly switching between what instruments to follow. A prime example of that can be heard in the second verse of About Us, especially in the live version. She starts out by establishing the groove with the, the drums the for the first three bars and then a fill during the fourth bar, setting herself up for the next four bars, where she gradually starts playing off the vocals. The first two bars 
by matching the vocal phrases subdivided by 16th notes. And for the second two bars, now the transition is complete and now she just plays a lower harmony to the vocals. After that, she immediately switches to locking up rhythmically to Kanami's octave climb for one bar. And then, for the last bar, she rounds everything off with a little fill of 16th notes, almost like a drum fill. All that during 10 bars. Her playing and writing is a big reason why I keep coming back to their music over and over again. Thank you very much for taking the time to share your experience and knowledge and your feelings regarding Mises playstyle. I wonder what you, the viewer, what do you think of Misa as a bassist? For someone who doesn't know anything about being a bassist or guitar or music, I'm gonna say she's damn impressive. Not just Misa, literally every single member. Once again, I've, I feel like when I've said this before, but these members, there are people who have honed their craft and they've come in, there's like five pros, basically there are five main protagonists of an anime who are OP as hell, but they're all in one anime and they're all in one group and no one can break them. This is how it feels like. It really does. There are five OP protagonists kind of living a, a chill life in the normal immortal world. But my, damn, they're too good. I can't wait for Miku's because hers is three part and I want to know what her story is because everyone else's is quite short and they kind of know one another, but Miku is the one who brings everything together. Can't wait. I feel like it's going to be her choice, not her choice, but it's her opinion to have the maid outfits. For some reason, I it's just in in my head. I'm very interested to know what's on your mind. Let's my move mind is exploding, to the dude. end of our journey. Misa learned to play a lot of instruments, and even though she knew which ones she wanted to learn, she ended up playing the one instrument she never even thought about. From the moment she picked up She's a bass, too good at it. Misa never stopped playing it. She loves bass so much that she even switched courses to become a professional bassist and live from her passion. In the end, Misa ended up with band made thanks to the boldest move and the perfect timing. I feel like and if you notice from the picture below, wait, I'm going to go back a bit. Uh, there we go. In this one, you can clearly see Miku is the only one who has the proper maid outfit. Like, hers is like a proper full maid. And then there's Kanami. And then it's slowly transitioned to uh, Achan. I'm gonna call her Achan because you guys said uh, that's her nickname. So, Achan. Her is this, a combination. So, it's like a maid outfit, but also a bit of her style. And then there's Psyche, who's like full on. I would say it's similar to a maid outfit, but hers is more stylish, I would say, with like the headband. It, I love her headband, it's so pretty. But then there's Misa, once again, her the assassin vibe, it really does suit her. But once again, they all have like this, a bit of a maid element in between them and their personalities show in their outfits and it's just wonderful. Timing. And bandmate is a band where everyone shines. Yep. Everyone has a moment in every song. Everyone We're used has to a seeing spotlight. guitarists and drummers being highlighted, but bassists? That's not very common. How many bands that you listen to allow their bassists to really shine? I'm talking about bands with two guitars or a guitar and a piano. Oh. Not that, damn, you, this, this man is really making me think about bands that I know. And yeah, once again, this is the only group that I know that actually, like, not group, sorry, a band that I know that actually showcases every single member's skills. Like, you know, these guys are bloody amazing at what they do. And they actually show it. So, you know. And there's no one lacking. There is in a single part of this group that's lacking. It's nothing. My God. <laughs> this is, sure once again, the perfect group. Examples, but since it's I'm getting angry. <laughs> ben has always found a way to allow Misa to find her spotlight. From Thrill... I mean, not gonna lie, Misa was the influence. first one that I noticed. I can't believe it or not. Dice. Dice, yes. Or even Manners. 
during live performances introducing a, a song. Of <laughs> to go crazy on a duel with Konami. This one. Sick. I, I love it. It was too much. It's like the two anime protagonists show off. Nomisa's personality <laughs> is mostly introverted. When she is on stage playing bass, she seems finally free and is having the time of her life. Yes. She even learned programming and participated actively in the songwriting process. Since she joined Bandmate, Misa followed her passion to become a professional bassist and surrounded herself with the best group of friends who have become very close to what we can call a family. Oh, that was so cute. Oh, that was so wholesome. The way, oh my God. I think we really are a family. Chug, 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 chug. <laughs> oh, but she didn't chug it. Whoa. Damn. Thank you so much once again, Orange san It was once again a wonderful video. Breaking new game. <laughs> That's so great. Wow. Oh. Ooh. Well, this was something. Oh my god. Oh. oh, before I start with my thoughts and opinions, I just want to say that, yeah. Guys, uh, uh, thank you so much for asking about Farah. She's doing fine. She actually has stopped coughing. So she's doing really well. She's taking her medicines. She's alive and well. Thank you for all the lovely comments. Uh, she, do she did read them. I made sure that she was reading them. So yeah. Also, I do read your lovely comments as well. But thank you for uh, the people who say that my side tangents are funny or any of that but yeah thank you for that but oh on a serious note oh my god damn once again i freaking love these jocks they're so good once again i've said this before but they're just way too good like how is that so well put together and whew, okay i'm gonna calm down <laughs> okay, so now that we're done with mesas i am really excited about Miku's because like, it has a bit of a mystery for someone who really, like, is very uplifting and upbringing, especially with the radio one that we have had a couple of clips so far. She's, like, her post sound is, once again, it's so cute. I love the, the pigeon, the pigeon reference. Now I know. It doesn't mean it, it doesn't have any bad connotation. So yeah, thank you for that. But whoa, I am excited. I, it's like the grand finale of everything. So everything's going to come in together at the same time. But yeah, uh, when I will be uploading the the three parts. I think it is three parts separately. So we're still going to go into this journey. But I am a bit worried about what I'm going to do after this. I feel like this is, this is I don't want I want I don't want to leave this for some reason. I just I just want to stick to bandmate, but once again, if you guys have any other recommendations or any other groups you would like me to check out, if they have documentaries like this, please comment them down below. Uh, I would be really happy to react to them because I genuinely really enjoy this. Uh, you might not see my expression change a lot, but that's just because I'm really focusing and I'm just absorbing everything that I'm hearing. Also, Leo has been going around here and there a couple of times, so if you hear anything, it is Leo. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. You can also follow me on my Instagram. I'm gonna pull it up down here anywhere. Please follow me because I'm the most active on my Instagram. So please, if you're watching this video, like and subscribe because I once again want to say that I want to hit a milestone. I am really excited and I really love doing this and I want to make this like, I would say a full-time job. I am looking for a job as well, but I'm really enjoying the, what I'm doing right now and I would love to continue doing this. So please show your love and support. It really means a lot. I, I really love doing this. It's it's really fun. I, I stopped halfway, but now that I'm back, I'm like, I don't want to leave because this is just amazing. Everyone is being so nice. It, I'm saying I just love doing this now.
Uh, sorry if this looks a bit angled off because I completely forgot to talk about this but I'm really sorry about the video quality on the last one. I have no idea what happened. Uh, it completely like recorded fine but the moment I added it on the editor of software it just completely blurted out so I'm really sorry about that. I, I am currently saving to get like a really nice camera because my phone is quite old so it's slowly losing quality but it might take a while for me to get everything, get all the funds ready to get like, a really nice camera which shows my face with HD crisp quality and you can see all the the things that I tried to hide with makeup, not makeup but like with the filter makeup of this phone. <laughs> so yeah, until then please bear with me with this really bad lighting and really bad camera quality. It will be improving soon. So just yeah, that's all. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Sayonara! See you next time! Sampai jumpa lagi! Annyeong! Bye!